Forsaken here, and today we're going to be doing some review of what's on my workbench. Uh, one of the last videos I put out did show off this corpse action figure, and <clears throat> he's, you know, basically from a mirage that I've cut the helmet off of and sculpted the hair so that he'd have hair. I've also added the lowers from a, a, um, <clears throat> one of the Doug Dynasty guys lowers. So I think that's size lowers. And of course I painted up the boots and stuff and I think he's looking pretty cool. So that's one of the last things I finished before on a previous video. Kind of give you an idea. Uh, one thing that I definitely have found that's cool is this right here. For those of you that customize, you can get these drink stirrers that come in bottle shapes at the top. One of my friends gave this to me. We were out, they were drinking, and this had a mixed stir stick stuck to the bottom of it. I just chopped that off there and ground it down a little bit so it could sit level. And now I have the first of many uh, action figure bottles to go on, like a, if I ever want to do a bar diorama, anything like that. So that's pretty cool. Now, um, one thing I've been doing is I did get one of those action figures that falls that comes apart in parts where you can put it all together, <coughs> where you can mix and match your action figures. I think it's pretty cool, uh, but it was broken, like the face was all gnawed up or whatever. So now I decided to go ahead and try my hand at from scratch, kind of making my own action figure. Uh, spaceman. Now what I've done is got him a helmet here and I've sculpted a helmet. As you can see it will fit down in there a little bit but it also can turn and move a little bit and of course I've got a hole in there so I can attach uh, to a waist section where I can pivot. I have the arms already made where they can pivot up and down and twist. And the sculpting material is actually holding pretty good. I did turn it quite around quite a bit while I was letting it dry. So I could make sure that it would still move without, you know, losing the grip on those little edges. So that's one thing I'm working on. And I have no idea when that will come to fruition. The next thing I did is uh, I also happened to go to this place we have locally that has a bunch of salvage stuff. And one thing it had was a bunch of trophies. I found this trophy of a go-kart racer, and the racer guy was all static, so I got rid of him, and I need to get a steering wheel for it, but one of the reasons I haven't is I can actually put an action figure on this. Now, I painted it up, I sculpted the pedals, the brake pedal and the gas pedal. Everything else on here is just like it came, except for the seat where the guy was attached. Uh, there was a hole here, so I had to go ahead and sculpt that. But you can barely tell where I patched that up after painting it. Anyway, let me get a, put a guy on here, pause it up, and put a guy on here. We're back. So this guy is one of those corpse action figures. You can see that his head does pivot forward. So that's why I like this style of figure for this. One thing the corpse do that really works well is the neck actually looks natural when it's pivoted, pivoted forward. Um, some of the G.I. Joes do look down enough that they would be able to ride this pretty easily. But I think it's pretty cool. You could do a Mario Custom, or if you just wanted your guys to have a go-kart race, you could get a couple of these uh, trophies and have your own go-kart races. Okay, just look at this a little bit closer. You can see where I painted it to make it look rough. I painted it dark to where the muffler hole is supposed to be, so it would look more like there's actually a hole there. Painted on the engine and kind of mix the paints a little bit so you could see where it had some weathering. And painted the seat and sculpted those steering wheel gear, the uh, pedals and such. If it's anything like my go kart, this paint got scaped up pretty quickly when you're going around turns, hitting the dirt, clods popping up, and stuff like that. Anyway, I hope you like that, and we're going to move on to the next item. Okay, so the next item I have is a mech, and you can see from this right here that this was one of those mechs they put out where you could stick Lego stuff to it or something. It did not have the canopy, and it was missing the guns and such for it, so I found these things to attach to it. 
I got a missile launcher thing here from a corpse tank. I've got a gun from some sort of toy. I can shoot something. And I've also sculpted a seat for an 18th scale figure, like G.I. Joe corpse, something of that nature. The canopy, I'm working on making a canopy, but I think it's going to go more straight up. Because these are getting in the way of the figures getting into the mech. Um, just like when you customize anything, you're going to run into problems, uh, mistakes you made. Like I didn't replace, take that sticker off before I sculpted. I may regret that one day, but uh, overall it's turning out pretty good. I may move this. Uh, I don't really like how far forward it is. But then again, I may put something else back here. If I do that, then of course this will have to stay here. Anyway, that's the mech I'm working on. Uh, nowhere near done. I do have a finished piece we'll be looking at shortly. There's their sneak peek. Ha ha ha. And this is the other main thing I'm working on right now, besides my finished piece I just finished. I'm making an Iron Man into a Sentinel so that the X-Men can fight it. And I'm using some of those same joints for the hands because the Sentinels, they fight when they usually have their palms flat because they shoot repulsor beams out of their palms. So that's the idea. I'm going to get some plastic to put around this and then sculpt over it to make the flat palm there. And this will be where the repulsor beams come out. I even think about I'm going to Dremel with a Dremel and right there in the center put a magnet so I can attach uh, effects. And I think it'll look pretty good once it's all put together. You can see I've sculpted to change the profile of the figure a little bit, giving it things like these boot tops, more smooth finish. i am still got a sculpt here to finish up around the waist, but you can see all the detail that I'm adding for different metal and things of that nature. And of course the face, I did add a bunch of detail around the head to make it more like a Sentinel instead of just Iron Man. Anyway, I hope you guys think that's interesting, and I hope uh, you'll stick around when I have the final video for that, and you'll remember fondly watching this video. Now, uh, before, I'm going to do a cut before we go to our next project, because that'll be the last thing we're covering, really. So let me do this real quick. You can get these pretty quickly uh, at the Dollar Tree before I do that figure. And I usually fill this in with sculpting material and paint it. And I did cover this with some Mod Podge so that some of the paint would look like blood on the blade. I think I'm going to do some more of that on the actual spikes. But otherwise, I did not put any paint on here or here so that it wouldn't rub off when figures were holding it. In the past, I've had trouble where that had happened. When I painted it black or something of that nature. Okay, so... <clears throat> I hope you're liking what you've seen so far. Now we're about to get to a finished figure. Technically, the level of completeness of any custom is in the eye of the beholder. I have sculpted this thing quite a bit. All the belts, all the um, guns and the swords, all that had to be attached by me. This used to be a Supergirl, Supergirl's action figure. So I had to sculpt on the chest. So it wouldn't be a little bitty pedophile figure. Um, and I sculpted this, you know, this is of course Windpool. I'm messed up the feet. I'm going to have to fix them. I was trying to sculpt in them so that she'd stand up better. And I think I've just made it worse. Um, overall, you know, I really like how this figure has turned out. And I will be working on getting it, making it even better. The head is still the Supergirl head. All I did was pretty much take the hair off and then sculpt over it. The head is attached by a magnet. So if I get another Supergirl, I can basically get an un unmasked version. Since she's a blonde that looks a lot like Supergirl, except for she has pink hair tips at the end. And of course, the guns are... Uh, I took razor covers and glued those in place and then made the guns fit into there by trimming down the gun and drilling into the leg a little bit and then I basically sculpted over all of that to make the belts and the actual 
uh, holsters and the straps for the holsters and all that. I made the belt buckle. Remember, this was Supergirl, so she had this whole section in here I had to fill in where her skirt would normally be. Uh, overall, like I said, I'm really pleased with the figure. Um, she can hold a sword or gun in her right hand, but her left hand doesn't really do anything. Uh, her leg, her, I did not lose any articulation. It is not a legend, unfortunately, because uh, it would have a little bit better ankle articulation if it was, and I wouldn't have to be fighting it standing up right now. Let me try to see if I can get it. Well, yeah, I'm really going to have to work on this. So, for the most part, I'm pretty pleased with the figure. And maybe if I just take the swords out. Okay, so, uh, like I said, you can stand it up. It just takes to, you got to balance the feet out a little bit. And it helps if you have two hands to do that. Since I was holding the camera with one, that really wasn't working too good. The sword also can help balance it, depending on how you pose the sword. But, um, there's Gwenpool. My custom action figure. Thanks for checking out my video and I hope that you have a great day.